So when I was in college in UCC, uh, I remember having some very interesting conversations with uh, friends of mine. So I was kind of discovering the faith myself and discovering uh, truths and teachings in, in the catechism or through various talks. And the internet was only coming of age at the time, so it wasn't as easy to find uh, your Archbishop Robert Barnes and those kind of people. But you'd find articles or you'd find different things. And I remember coming across uh, the description of or the, the, the categories, the, the, the criteria for a mortal sin, you know, that you have to know it's mortal, you have to do it freely, uh, and uh, it has to be a grave matter. So something serious, you know it's serious, and you do it freely. So we were talking about this in, in the house in college, and so the issue then of, obviously these kind of things are going to come up immediately, you know, the issue of morality, the issue of, of sleeping around and social life and all that kind of thing. And uh, so we got talking about why uh, such, not, not so much it, it's a big, bad, dirty sin, but why the Lord, why in his wisdom, the Lord doesn't see this as a good course of action, you know? So more than like, this is a bad thing to do, like this actually doesn't make us happy. This actually doesn't fulfill the way it promises it will. So it leaves us empty. And I remember then one of the girls thinking, but she said out loud, she said, but now that you're after telling me this, now that I know, I have a greater responsibility. And I said, Exactly, because if you, if you didn't know, you can, you can kind of plead innocence with the Lord, kind of, or ignorance, uh, but now that you know, you know. You've now been told. And it's, it's, it's interesting how, as we grow in our faith, and I use this between inverted commas, like, but the, the burden of our faith, or the, 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 the demands of the Lord can appear ever greater, the demands of the Lord. So I think it's a, it's a good question to ask ourselves. Is the Lord demanding? You know, is God demanding of us? Uh, St. Augustine as well. Uh, I mentioned it briefly yesterday when, when we spoke about St. Monica and, and, and St. Augustine. And uh, St. Augustine, who was very, very capable, uh, exceptionally intelligent, um, quite pleasure-seeking in, in, in his younger years, um, very taken by, by, by rhetoric and his, his fantastic ability to, to debate. When he heard St. Ambrose, this is what I said yesterday, when he heard St. Ambrose and then through the prayers of his mom, he converted. That's the short version of the story. The slightly longer version of the story is that he did not convert immediately. He did not want to be baptized immediately because he felt that there was no way he could live up to that standard. He did not think he could be pure. So he said, I see that the faith is true, this, this Christian faith, but there is no way I can live it. I can't, I, I can't live to that standard. I, I just, I don't think I can be pure. And he says then in, in his confessions, one day, however, he, uh, he read about two men uh, who had been converted on reading the life of Saint uh, Anthony the Abbot. And he felt terribly ashamed of himself. And he said, what are we doing to, this, to, to, to a friend of his, Alpius? He said, learned people, sorry, unlearned people are taking heaven by force while we, with all of our knowledge, are so cowardly that we keep rolling around in the mud of our sins. So unlearned people are taking heaven by storm and we, with all of our brains and our intelligence, we're rolling, still rolling around in the mud. And this just kind of motivated them. I've got to actually start doing something about my faith rather than just saying it's a nice idea and I think it's true and keeping my distance from it. I just have to get started, just dive in. And it's very interesting, because if we ask ourselves, like, is God demanding? Is he? We hear, we hear our gospel today, and the five talents, the two and the one. Now, a talent was in or around 33 kilos of silver. Now, 33 kilos, well, I weigh 80, so it's like a little less than half of me in solid silver. Like, five of those. And that's what you're entrusted with. So like that's it's phenomenal wealth. It's, it's, it's a huge amount. Even just to be given two, it's a, it's, it's a great responsibility. Like it's, it's a huge amount of wealth. And the guy who gets one buries it. Now, it's interesting because you think the guy who got one didn't steal it. He did, it was given to him and he gave it back. So that's, you think, well, at least, you know, at least he didn't lose it or it wasn't squandered. This is in the story of the prodigal son now. He, he, he was given this quantity of money, this quantity of silver, and he simply gives it back, which you would think, I mean, it's not the worst. It's, it's not actually the worst. You could, you could have paired off a little, kind of say nothing, and kind of say, oh, there it all is, when it actually 
wasn't entire and complete. No, he gives it all back. But the, the, the master didn't give it to him so that it could be given back. He gave it to him so that he could do something with it. So again, you might say, is, is this demanding? Like the Lord gives us abilities, intelligence, youth, uh, dreams, aspirations, uh, you know, this, this, this wonderful uh, life that young people have as well, this desire to go out and change the world, which is fantastic, and you need that. You need that. Uh, so we have all these desires and aspirations, hopefully inspired by the Lord. Now, what do you do with them? What, what you could say, well, yeah, sure, I'm only one person, what can I actually do? So you've been given the ability, you've been given the time, you've been given the youth and all, everything that you need. Uh, well, sure, look, I don't know. Or you've been given the priesthood, the gift of priesthood. I said, well, sure, you know, who am I? I'm only, I'm only one priest, I can't really do anything. So I'll just, I'll just tip away and look at the end of the day, sure, look, the Lord's will will be done. No, it doesn't really work that way. We have to do our part. We, the Lord, entrust these things to us. We work with him. So we can't just say, oh, the Lord will do everything. Y yes and no, the Lord will do everything in us and through us. But if, if we say the Lord will do everything so I can sit down on my couch and just watch the news all the time, well then no, the Lord can't do everything. Because sin happens as well because we don't collaborate with God. So is God demanding? I think the answer is yes and no. The Lord is demanding in that he does ask things of us. So he does ask that, that we convert our hearts, that we live a certain way, that we avoid, uh, that we avoid sin, that we avoid whatever leads us to sin, or even those people who lead us to sin. And that might seem demanding. As I say, for St. Augustine, this, this, this turnaround of his life seemed impossible. So it just seemed untenable. So it may seem demanding. But in comparison to what we get, the Lord isn't the least bit demanding at all. In comparison to heaven, in comparison to the, the, the bliss, the joy of all eternity, what he asks of us here is not hard. It really isn't. Like as if, you know, 10,000 years in heaven and you're only getting started. So if we have a, something, you know, adversity or some sort of a cross, maybe even physical illness to carry for a certain time, difficult and all as that is, and it is difficult, this will pass. But heaven will not. It will not. That the joy of, of heaven lasts for all eternity. Like, and after eternity is over, we're only getting started. <laughs> it just, you know, it's forever. So, so what he asks of us in the grand scheme of things is actually not hard at all. It may seem demanding here, but it's not. Even like people would say, um, people often ask, well, when I was a, School chaplain, they often ask about, you know, celibacy. Celibacy must be really hard. Um, no, no, it's, it's not as hard as you think, actually. Not, not, not at all. Um, I know plenty of people who are married and have a very, very difficult time with things. So, no, I mean, my life is full of love. To live a life without love, that'll be hard. But to live a life without that kind of intimacy, you, you, you know, you can. You can, absolutely can and be very, very happy. So... It's, is it demanding in a way, but what you get back is incredible. That this oneness of heart, like I just, I hope to live entirely for the Lord. It's an exclusive yes to the Lord. So it seems demanding, but considering what I get back, it's not. It's not. So the Lord is not demanding. Interestingly as well, if I may, just very briefly, on the, this, this parable of, of the talents. One is given five, the other two and the other one. It's not five, four, and two. It's five, two, and one. So the, like, sometimes this, this gospel is interpreted in terms of talents with the modern English use of the word talent, so like abilities. And, and if we do take that, take that understanding, sometimes you do find people who are particularly exceptionally talented in a number of ways. They have intelligence, they're musical, they're... they're uh, they're great fun to be with, great magnetic personalities, they're wonderful, they seem to have everything. Okay? But to whom much is given, much is expected. If you've been given a lot, then you must do a lot with it. And the next person, as I say, gets two. So another danger that we have to be careful of here in Ireland is if we see someone who is talented, in, in, as, 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 as they have intelligence, athletics, they're 
as I say, great personalities, they're attractive, they're young and old, all these kind of wonderful assets that they may have. Uh, the danger in Ireland is that we, we get a bit begrudging at times. We kind of look at someone like that and go, oh, look at them, little Miss Perfect. <laughs> Do you know? And immediately want to pull the person down rather than saying, isn't it amazing, isn't it fantastic that there are people out there who are so talented and give it all to the Lord? Well done. You have to be affirming of other people's abilities. We need to do a lot more than the church among us. We need to be very, very positive and affirming of other people's abilities. It's great that, that the church can, can benefit from the preaching ability of this person and the organizational ability of that person and the charismatic ability of that person and the orthodoxy of this person. Great. Celebrate it all. Because to whom much is, much is given, much is expected. So like, we, if, we, if a person is very talented, the Lord actually wants a lot from them too. Maybe, he, maybe more than he wants from you. So there's a, a weight of responsibility there. Okay. So, as we think today about St. Augustine, St. Augustine is a great saint of hope. For you, for me, for all of us, any occasions where we get lost, or for any family members maybe who are very wayward and want nothing to do with the Lord, we follow St. Monica's example. We continue to pray and offer up often silent tears for those that we love who are far from the Lord. But we never give up hope. Because when the Lord intervenes in a heart, when, when, when we have done everything we can do, when the Lord can touch a heart, when the circumstances as often break the person down so much so that now they're ready, now they're brought to their knees, now they're ready to open their hearts, well then in that moment all of the prayers, all of the tears will be worth it. So we never give up hope. If this be on the, uh, the smaller level, the, the micro level of our families or the macro level of the church in Ireland or the church in the world, we never give up hope. We never give up hope. The Lord will, will rise up saint, raise up saints to renew his church as he always has done. So we ask the good Lord to strengthen us and guide us in our use of what he has given us today, that we may reach, that we may reap a rich harvest. Amen. Amen.